there is a podcast no one asked for. A podcast you never knew you didn't want. Three beers in. This is the podcast. I anticipate a deeply religious experience. Greetings, listeners, and welcome to another episode of Three Beers In. Yay! Today on the podcast, we are drinking the King Grackle Stout by Texas Beer Company. Today, joining me, we got Ross. Hey! Cutter. I'm here. Joel. He's there. <laughs> and uh, me being Clint. I, I sh- should have worked that in a little bit better, Clint. I guess. <laughs> okay. Me, Clint. Me, Clint. All right, so... What do we know? You guys are based out of Taylor, just outside of yeah. uh, just outside of town. But so this is a seven point five percent American mm-hmm. stout. Oh, you had to you had to tell Clint that right. Oh off yeah, the, right oh, off the buddy. I'm <laughs> well, so excited now. Well, well it's if, Saturday. If we so. don't say, we'll probably forget it and yeah. never say it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that was one of the first things I noticed. And then on the label also says brewed with solar power. First thing I noticed yeah. and people power. First yeah. thing I noticed was the crown on the grackle. Yeah. The second thing I noticed was the notes of chocolate and coffee. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna well, let's crack pop these, these. Crack the grackle. Oh. Little spray. Uh huh. I didn't get any because I actually know how to open a beer. Normally, I have a person do this for me. That person's cutter. <laughs> okay, I was gonna say we don't need to hear about your mom. <laughs> Ooh, nose is nice. Mm-hmm. Really dark with a dark tan head there. Yeah. So things I'm noticing right off the bat just looks like, chocolatey. Very mm-hmm. inconsistent on the amount in the can. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I have a smaller glass. Oh, right okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like this pour. I do. It's a good yeah. pour. It's good. It, it good looks pour. I was all like, wow. <laughs> Earthy on the nose and mm, oh, chocolatey, yeah, roasty. I get that roasty nose. Yeah, right. yeah, it's very roasty. Looks thick. That's what she we said. We don't need to hear about your mom again. Ooh. It's almost got that, that yeah. burnt taste that I really like. Mm-hmm. Very roasty. Roasty malts. I wanted something like this all season. Just couldn't find it. Mm. That is definitely a stout. But yeah, it, it's kind of weird because it can be hard in the area to find stouts. We've got yeah, a few, nice. but I don't know. It, it's like whenever we're looking for a stout, it's like... Uh, we've, well, we've already done that brewery. Then there's nothing else. Like, I don't know. You can't find them at the Bradley Bar? Well, well, and there's also, (laughs) I I think the biggest problem is that we're in Texas. Yeah. Stouts are not a real popular choice. Right. (laughs) This time, this time of year it is, but it's not a real popular choice. Yeah. And it it doesn't last very long. Right. So they'll be back to brew in uh, lawnmower beers pretty soon. Yeah. We're in, our, we're in our two, two weeks of winter uh, right now, which yeah. has been going on two months, <laughs> which is rather unusual. Yes. Yeah, it was in the 70s earlier this week. And it's like 40 today. Yeah. yeah. Really 40 and front. windy. Yeah. That's, yeah. Hey. Weather, you guys. It's weather. I, I, thought, might, I, I thought, thought my cookie earlier today would blow out of my hand. Luckily. Wait. It didn't. You were going to toss your cookies? No. <laughs> I wasn't. The wind was going to take it. <laughs> so how, how was that? So I was at Circle's annual Cookies and Craft Beer. Where they celebrate Girl Scouts and craft beer, of course. Girl Scout cookies and craft yes, beer. Yes, Girl Scout cookies, not Girl Scouts and craft beer. That would be... Yeah, that's weird. Cutter definitely would have been there. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> hey, just because I have a beer doesn't make me a perv. <laughs> no, it doesn't help. <laughs> I mean, no, it doesn't help, but, uh, but yeah. But yeah, that was, that was fun. Ben was there handing out the patches and glasses and your punch cards or whatever. And uh, we got to hang out with Alex and Caesar from Hop Squad, see what was going on there. Got an update, I guess, from them, maybe. They're opening next Not week? Not official. I don't know. They, they've got their drains and their piping in. They got to get their flooring in now. So. Someone knocked on the front door it's and still, asked if they needed the pipe laid. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's exactly how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> so I tell I hear it, from, I tell I hear it differently. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what I'm assuming. So, yeah, hopefully March. We can be down there drinking some beer. Hmm. March, but, huh? But I don't know. <laughs> mm. It might get pushed back. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Things happen. See how things go. They should have their tanks set up uh, by the end of the month, maybe. Hmm. But uh, yeah. 
So the higher ABV on this beer, is it, what am I trying to say? To Just style? Like, yes. Yeah, to style? Yeah. Is yes. that what you get? Your, your American, American stouts shops? typically are in the 7 8%. Your Imperials are typically nine plus most oftentimes. Correct me if I'm wrong. Because well, Imperial means double, right? Typically, yeah. Or just really strong. Yeah. Triple. Well, yeah. So what these aren't, you're not saying these are Imperial. No, this no, is, no, this no, is no, not. No. But, no. but your Imperial style. Like, He's saying that American, American style, style yeah. American style stouts typically have this kind of 7.5, 7 to 8%. Yeah, a little bit about the American stout. Ooh. It's strikingly bold and undeniably beautiful. It blends generous amounts of dark malts with American hops to offer an adventurous experience that is unmatched by any other style. That sounds beer. exactly like Tony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're dark. Uh, they allow the, <laughs> the senses to run wild. <laughs> Uh, with this deviously sophisticated take on the European staple. Many other beer styles that have become prized by American brewers and beer lovers alike, American Stout is a distinct variant of a European Stout beer counterpart. True to style, American Stouts showcase generous quantities of the American hops that fans have come to expect. And much like other Stout beers, American Stouts can be enjoyed year-round, but commonly considered a beer for the fall or winter months. I typically, when I think of an American style, I don't feel like they're as creamy yeah, as no, the European yeah. style. It's definitely not yeah. as and, creamy. And they're much more It's more like, a, more like an Irish style. I'd say like a, a drier style. A, dr- a drier and they... Uh, um, and hoppier, usually. A little hoppier, but also yeah, they have they have more of that burnt flavor. I can so see like, that, yeah. I, more more the uh, toast roast. Yeah. yeah. Roasty <laughs> like toast. I said, Different style. I like them both. I typically lean towards American styles a little bit more. I would lean towards European styles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. Give me a nice Guinness. Or maybe, well, you don't like hops, so there's them. Or maybe a tropical style. That's true. I'd like well, I don't like... Stout. No, hold yeah. on. Ooh, little pineapple in there. Yeah. <laughs> little pineapple stout? Yeah. Tropical fruits in there. Never had one. They were brewed in the style, I don't know, became popular or it just originated in Jamaica, like caribbean islands and stuff i could see where they had british people of course so they're like i need beer while i'm enslaving these people what the hell am i doing (laughs) so anyway that that's where the tropical style came from though this is not a tropical style if i want to come over and brew a tropical style would you be interested oh yeah we have to enslave them first yeah so well not me (laughs) just somebody (laughs) (laughs) those hops (laughs) hey joel step into this cage real quick Whoa. I don't know. There's something. Something just, seems weird. Two yeah. minutes after I said that just because I have a beard, I'm not a perv. <laughs> yeah. The, right. yeah, the extra alcohol plus the, the hoppy elements to it, obviously, it's just getting into that territory of beer that I just don't like. Yeah. So I really like this. Um, I've been looking for something like this uh, all summer. I, I guess we had Celis coffee porter yeah they had their double coffee porter yeah and then um what was the other one that i got not the only one that's close to it locally independence has their oatmeal convict style. hill yeah, yeah convict hill yeah but it's not, not once again, there, it's a little sweeter stout but it's yeah. like are there any more european style stouts brewed in texas that we know of that give you that like thicker creamier i doubt it temptress that's, yeah, a, t- that's a that's typically a milk stout though, but yeah. I mean that's going to be creamier, that's going to be thicker, heavier body, and then they have different. Clint's favorite variety, L- the L to M. The L to M. That was not good. No, <laughs> that was more American style. It was. Yeah. <laughs> no, no it's, I, there, there's there's really not a ton of Texas stouts. Not in Texas. Once again, uh, yeah. I don't think brewers in Texas are really concentrating on stouts, unfortunately. I don't know. Infamous has their peanut butter stout, yeah. which I haven't had. Sweep, Sweep the, the leg. leg. I haven't tried it either. I, just, I love the Cobra Kai. Yeah. Like. <laughs> I'd like to visit Infamous. Where's that at? I don't know. I haven't really looked it up. But uh, They were your second favorite Oktoberfest. It was. It was pretty nice. Although it wasn't to style or anything, but I, I just liked it. It, I liked, it stood I out. It stood I, out. I liked all those October. I like yeah. Oktoberfest beers, though. All right. Well, about... This beer, or about this brewery. So long ago, 2010, in a neighborhood far away, <laughs> J.D. Ginn's girlfriend gave him 
a homebrewing kit so he would shut up about politics. But if it hadn't been for politics, he would never have met his business partner, Ian Davis. They met in 2008 while working on the Gary Johnson campaign. Oh, Gary Johnson. Well, no, not really. It was Barack Obama. Oh. Davis said in an interview, uh, you drink enough of your homebrew and you start dreaming big. And that's basically how the idea got started. And they started raising money. They had a Kickstarter campaign to raise $10,000 for down payment on their brewing equipment. They quickly reached their goal and raised over $30,000 for the brewery. So from the beginning, they decided they wanted to be a small town Texas brewery that embodies what Texas is all about. It wasn't until a friend moved out of Texas to a little town of Taylor, they found a boarded up building on Main Street, but the building was out of reach. One... They couldn't afford it, and the other, it was in need of massive renovations. That's when Davis received a phone call from a friend. Apparently, an artist friend bought the building and wanted a brewery, Hmm. so they were in. But unfortunately, it would take three years to get the space ready for for them. Uh, So yeah, three years. Yeah, three years. Welcome to Texas. Yeah, I don't know (laughs) what was going on. If they had to just tear it down and rebuild it, I don't know. But they were waiting three years. But in the meantime, they traveled to Taylor Monthly to hold tastings for Texas Beer Company. People came and gave opinions and suggestions. And according to the statesman, it wasn't long before Taylor and the Taylor Economic Development Corporation gave them $400,000 for the brewery. Damn. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Well, I guess city they just, sponsorship. Yeah. I guess yeah. they well, really the city wanted really people wanted to open. A, yeah. 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 An, and, an and I was reading other. I was reading other articles, and it's, it's like they feel like they are the city is a brewery, basically, like because that's where everybody goes. Before that, they had no place to hang out or anything. So well, one of the interesting awesome. things about like the the really small, like t- more hyper local, which I feel like these guys are going for. Yeah. Is that you really got to stick with it. Like, I mean, they, they were out there before the building was open. So yeah. out samples and like, hey. Yeah. Uh, every month. Yeah. Getting. We're not yeah, open first yet. First one's free. But, yeah. But yeah, getting getting people hooked on their beer and, and tasting and seeing how they liked it and what they thought they should change. And Drinking the Kool-Aid, if you will. Yeah. It's Flavor-Aid. Flavor-Aid. <laughs> but anyway, that's not the saying, though. <laughs> But yeah, and so that's that's pretty much Texas Beer Company. I tried looking for more, but their website, I don't want to say it's out of date. So I'll just imply that it's seriously out of date. <laughs> we'll, we'll say. Uh, they have a lot of the, I, I think mostly they go through Facebook. So their Facebook events are up to date on the website. But yeah. all their beers and the brewery and everything, it's like coming soon. Right. So. I, I do like the fact that they do keep their blog somewhat updated. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a little bit more. But it actually tells you where you can buy their beer, literally. Yeah. In every bar in the area, and then every convenience store, nice. every store. Like, yeah. I wish more companies would do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, there's some that have maps, but yeah. Should we require their sales guys? Isn't it like findtexasbeer.com or something like that? Is that... I don't know. That might be what it links to. Yeah. I was like, I was like, I know there's a few of them. It's like, hey, like here's here's where to find our beer. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. But no, I I give the beer a solid one first impression. But yeah, once again, I, I like I like stouts, like porters. Clint's gonna be upset though. I've been drinking more IPAs lately. Mm. I'm falling back into that scene. Hoppy pale ales and IPAs. What are you drinking? Uh, I just bought. I've been drinking a lot of Brazos lately. They're willing. Oh yeah, yeah right. They're willing's pretty good. I also, You're a disgusting human human <laughs> being. I'll just let you know, you hipster fuck. <laughs> <laughs> their Seven Winter Angels was pretty good. That's their Snickerdoodle Stout, right? Uh, yeah. Snickerdoodle oh. Brown. Wait, Snickerdoodle Brown. Oh, well, okay. I'll, I'm still in. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's good. It's good. It is good. They're, they're, they're regular, it's seven Spanish angels. Didn't we do that for carts and crafts? But the snickerdoodle like version of it's really good. Yeah. It only on the fence of browns. I've only had a couple and I really care for them. Mm. Tony T- Brown. Tony's one of the browns that <laughs> yeah. you care for. <laughs> He's the only brown for me. <laughs> and brown do for you. And, and <laughs> UPS. There you go. <laughs> so, so I was talking to somebody today and they were like, because they, oh, they listened to our, uh, um, our Irish episode. Oh, yeah. And uh, they're they're giving Don't feedback work. about it, and they're like, and he was telling me how to ship beer. Like he's like uh-huh. he's like FedEx will do it for you as long yeah. as you tell them. It'll cost you a little bit more. Yeah, I will. Yeah. UPS as long as you don't tell them. They're like, okay, it's olive oil. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, but if you do it at the USPS, they're gonna be like, that's a felony. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't allow it, and neither does does Canada Post. Yeah, but FedEx they'll charge a duty once it gets over the border. So yeah, I don't know. So what we should come up with is uh, 
not a three beers in box, but an olive oil box that we can start selling on the website for people to deliver their own beer to other places. I don't think that is something we should yeah. do. We're, no. just, we're just selling the box, olive oil boxes. What they do with it is up to them. Man. Oh my goodness. I do not want to cross that bridge at all. <laughs> Seems like a lot of setup costs. Hey, to... hey, hey, high risk, high reward, guys. <laughs> I don't know what you're putting in the box. It's that's just, true. It's olive oil. That's that's true. We make like, it for Pop, olive oil. Popeye is going to be really upset. <laughs> <laughs> all this olive oil being shipped no, out of Boston. No, what we really need is a distribution company to be the middleman between us and all the people that buy from them. Yeah. So we create all the olive oil boxes, there hand you them go. off to this distributor, and they sell yes. them to all the people who want them. And then you have like... Never mind. <laughs> this, this went from being like, uh, it's like, we should not do this. It's like, maybe like, here's we how we do this. this. Maybe this is how we can do No, this. no, we, we still should not do it. I'm just saying, if you want to do it, this is what you need to go about. I think between the that's four of us, we orders. probably know that's, some people. That's how to, like, because then when that distributor gets shut down because they get a notification like, hey, stop doing this. You shut that distributor down. You open up a new one. <laughs> there you go. And then you resume business. We don't want any part of this, but we business will take kickbacks. <laughs> there you go. Sounds like Clinton watching a lot of narcos. Like that's all they talk about. <laughs> it's like, no, oh, that no, doesn't no, speak anymore. Spanish. He wouldn't, gonna... he wouldn't watch that. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey. You make him an offer you can't refuse. Uh, okay. No, that's it. Once that's again, <laughs> impressions. Why? Why? <laughs> why are we doing impressions on this podcast? <laughs> But this um, beer, this beer is delicious, though. I do like this beer. Yeah, style. it's not, it's not bad. It's, it's a one. If I wouldn't like refuse it, but it's just not my style. Yeah, I've it's been a- drinking most of the day, so it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> heavy beer is like whew, weighing me down. It reminds me of when you guys went to Adelbert's. Yeah. Until like, <laughs> oh yeah, we recorded. Yeah, after drink that. all day, and it's like I get off work until like. Everybody's full. Like he just ate a whole fucking burrito. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Burritos after that as well. Oh, wait. I thought that was uh, North by Northwest. No, that was Adelbert's. Adelbert's. You weren't there for North. What? No. I was. Yeah, uh, was. Yeah. yeah. That one we I had burritos. So. Maybe we had burritos twice. <laughs> uh, you might have had a burrito before that. <laughs> oh, that was the same day. We did go to Adelbert's. Then we did the burrito. And then we did the North by Northwest podcast. No, no, no. 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 Did the burrito. The and Adelbert's. we did Adelbert's. Yeah. Rolling blackout. You know what I have I bought in my, beer at Adelbert's. You know what I have in my fridge out in the garage right now? Some converter. Archetype. Converter Colts. Oh, yeah. That'd be real nice after <laughs> drinking this. I've, I've heard that's really good. But the fuck you cutter Kolsch from Whitestone is so much better. <laughs> it is. Yes. It adds a... Another layer to the flavor. Yeah. And Circles Kolsch is pretty damn good. It is good. I also not, had the fanny, pack. not the fanny pack one, the other one. I there is no other one. one. There is two. no other one. No, they don't. They had two. Okay, but they don't. <laughs> They're not anymore. They have two. They had two. All right. But then they did the fanny pack one. The other one was good. I also have the Hefeweizen from Wrench. Is it better than the Weizenbach, you think? Or? No, the Weizenbach is better. The Weizenbach is probably Wrench's best beer. Yeah. Yeah. What did we do the shandy with? Was that their Weizen? Their their Hefeweizen? Hefeweizen, yeah. Their Hefeweizen. Yeah, for, for so, the yeah, McCrones the, episode, which trying to schedule another one. See if we can do that next month. Coming yeah, we you. need to figure out the beers that we want to do for that. So send us your suggestions, you. assuming this is going to get out. Well, I'm ready for my next one. What are you? Okay. What about y'all? Oh, wow. Clint, buddy. You, you just drink <laughs> stouts way too fast. I don't know what it is. <laughs> It's that small glass. It just goes, yeah. it goes so much it's quicker. So it's easy to drink out of that small glass. <laughs> yes. That's right. It would be really funny to like give the, like Clint like one of those beer helmets where it's just got two beers on there because after he drank it, all those, it's like he'd be done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just one of those, just two beers, right? Yeah. Just one on each side and then. That way you can always tell yeah. whenever Clint's done. Like, it's like <laughs> if, those, if those cans are getting refilled, like that's a bad idea. <laughs> that's a bad idea. Bo- oh, Bobby did, is, Bobby is you, right around the corner. Did you, uh, did you finish those two beers in your helmet? Yes. <laughs> You're done. No, Beer no. Give me, give me two more. I'll be fine. Yeah. I'll be fine. I'm barely feeling it. Well, Bobby, Bobby level. Yeah. <laughs> uh, As the cans go down, the Bobby level goes up. You just put a tally in like chalk on the helmet for how many beers I've had. And then once you hit this many chalk lines, it's a scale from Clint to Bobby. And there you go. We, we were talking about uh, uh, Dodd last night. Bobby. Oh, Cause, yeah. Because Cammy didn't know my middle name. And so. <laughs> She's like, why? It's like, is that why they call you Dodd? I mean, I don't call me Dodd all the time. <laughs> Just whenever Bobby's around. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. 
She and then she goes, well, Tony, what's your alter ego? He's like, just Tony, yeah. <laughs> just Tony, yeah, Tony. just drunk Tony, <laughs> <laughs> just drunk yeah. Tony. Clint and I take off our glasses. <laughs> like, yeah. Bobby and Dodd, another oh, whirlwind man. adventure. Got to publish those children books sometimes. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You can't, give, of Bobby and <laughs> you can't give a tattoo to a baby. <laughs> <laughs> so interesting name, this beer, the King Grackle. As Grackles are, uh, you know, not very well liked in the state of Texas. Well, there's differing they're, opinions, really. They're very, what's the word? I was gonna Polarizing. Say, I was going to say noble. Yeah. At least, well, that was it. This can yeah, has, this, has a crown on it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, they're very relatable to people in this area, I'd say. Yeah. It's probably the, be- the best way to put it. So you guys ready, yeah. ready for some grackle facts? <laughs> let's, let's get some grackle facts. But, but no, but like... King grackle facts? A lot of people really dislike grackles yeah. as a rule. Yeah. Yeah, uh, as a rule. So you you named a beer after something that a lot of people really dislike. Yeah, but it, it's relatable to Texas. It is, yeah. I, is. I, get, I mean, I fact get it. Austin, right. really. Fact, fact number one. Fact number one. It's, it's relatable really- to Texas. <laughs> it is, yeah. Yeah, so Grackles. So talked about a lot about Grackles before. You know, it's hard to imagine going to a grocery store and not hearing Grackles. They're anywhere. There's a chance that there will be free food on the ground or a car parked under a tree. People have tried to get rid of them with everything from shotguns to expensive science lasers. Really? Lasers. Yeah, so they've tried a lot of a lot of ways to get rid of them, but they always come back like Cedar or Academy <laughs> Award winner Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> also relatable to Austin. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Someone said they're as Austin as Willie Nelson and as Texan as the Alamo. It's the unofficial official bird of Austin. During June, there's even a grackle week. So basically... There are a lot of grackles in Austin. There's uh, probably more there's grackles. There's a lot of grackles in, in Central Texas. Yeah, yeah. There, sure. There's actually two kinds of grackles in the area. Male and there's, female. Well, king okay. four. <laughs> uh, there's the common grackle, and ironically, the much more common great-tailed grackle. Uh, <laughs> it's bigger and blacker with a bluish-purple sheen, evil yellow eyes, and they'll fight a bitch. <laughs> Is Wayne Grackle going to have to choke a bitch? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah. So, again, uh, lots of Grackles. But before you ever see one, you'll hear it. They sound like a slide whistle. (laughs) Murmurs, clucks, chirps, and even weird robot noises. (laughs) And often all at once. Yep. And plus, they're very social. So, like we were saying, there's usually hundreds of them together. Really, really hundreds. Five maybe PM, thousands. Five I don't PM know. in the spring and at H E B. Jesus man. Christ! Like all and of the telephone. And they're calls. all just screaming, like yeah. the girls at a Hanson concert. <laughs> So they have a lot of different calls, and in fact, in Mexican folklore, the grackle, it was mute until it stole all its its seven songs, seven different songs from an all knowing sea turtle. I uh, <laughs> see turtles. Uh, and it's, that's, Clint, Clint's all about making impressions. Yeah. So it's all like, if anybody else, but, if anybody else, knows, anybody else. One, one seven and a half percent beer, <laughs> and all of a sudden I'm doing impressions over here. So yeah. there's double, like, there's double standards. No, yeah. I, actually, I, I really just want Ross to like cut in the clip from Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's Mexican folklore. They were Mexican folklore, which is where the great tail grackle is from, Mexico. They say they came up from Mexico in the late 18, 1900s following cattle. People believed in it so much it became real. So no, I thought you were yeah. going with that. No, no. It was always real. Actually, it, I was reading that the Aztecs actually kept them as pets or sort of pets or cultivated them for their feathers because they have like that iridescent hue. So when they moved their capital to Tenochtitlan, they brought a whole bunch of them from like uh, the Yucatan, I guess, is where they were, and then over to central Mexico, and then it's just like, well, they're here now, anyway. And then like, uh, everybody yeah. else from California. So are they still considered they just an invasive Texas. species at this some, point? Some some people say, but I mean, they've been here forever, so I don't think they you can. Well, not forever. You just put a date to it. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, for- forever. As long as I've been here. So, yeah. Anyway. They've been here longer than me, yeah. so I guess they have forever. Time. Yeah, yeah. Coming up from Mexico, stealing up bird jobs and cigarette butts. <laughs> uh, but some people, I'll just say Austin has embraced them. They they even have Yelp reviews, two and a half stars. So 
but not everybody likes them. There, there's a couple. Here's a couple bad ones. Please stop looking at me that way. So, yeah. I don't know. Oh, I, I, I do know. Yeah. The <laughs> yeah, way they yeah. fucking look at you. Yeah. They got those evil yellow eyes. Makes me want to punch them. Yeah. Also, uh, stop flying two inches from my head inside Whole Foods and never take my biscuit again, you flying rat. I hate you. (laughs) And naturally, I'd give them no stars if I could. But then you have the good reviews. Like, some might think the Grackles merit a one or two star review. Oh, you've experienced better? You mean you've you've experienced a better inedible pest bird? Where? (laughs) Certainly not amongst a flock of vacuous <laughs> pigeons. And then there, there's another one. They crap everywhere, make a lot of noise, are opportunists. I've decided they're a lot like poets. <laughs> anyway. Four stars. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think that was a five-star review. I don't know. Yes. And Can we all so, get snaps for that one? <laughs> two snaps, a twist, and a kiss. Also, tonight's beer isn't the only local beer named after the Grackle. There's the family business Grackle. We talked about, yeah. Which is Imperial Stout. And the Lord Grackle from Hop Squad, which is an IPA. Though I was thinking it should be a black IPA because, I don't know, it's a Grackle. It's a Grackle. Should it, shouldn't it be dark? Well, unless but, it's female. Yeah, that's true. They're a muted brown and smaller, like all female birds. Hey! Don't be talking trash. Our ladies are beautiful on the inside, you creep. Anyway, so, but not only do we name our beers after the Grackle, but the new MLS team, Austin FC, will be named Los Sonates, or the Grackles. What? Yeah, and they'll have six different chants, six awful chants. Here, here's one that you might have heard. Is it R2-D2? Uh, no. <laughs> Wait, are you making this up? Or no, are you for... no, no, oh this my. is real. God. They voted on it last week, and here's one of the chants. Well, I won't back down. No, I won't back down. You can stand me <laughs> yeah. up at the gates of hell, but I won't back down. Tom hey, baby, Petty. there ain't no easy way out. Hey, I stand my ground, and I won't back down. So, I don't know how you're going to chant that. but That's like, not a good chant. No. Won't. No. Back, back down. down. No, no, just, no. Just yeah. Not back down. Don't yeah. Back down. <laughs> yeah. That's when do you do that chant? Like, I don't know. When you're four when points you're, down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you're four points down and you yeah. just scored hey, one goal and everybody, so you're like, everybody knows that the first few years are building. So yeah, like, so that's you right. Might, you might you're building the team. Losing, like, yeah. like Papa Gruden. <laughs> Papa, Papa John Gruden and, and uh, the Papa Raiders. John Gruden, yeah. Gruden sandbox as I like to call it. No, oh, yeah. All right, so what's another chant? Oh, okay. I'll go through a couple more. There's called 7-4. Can, can you yell into your mic a little bit more? Yeah. You want? <laughs> yeah. It's 7-4, uh, 7-4. Seven, four, seven, four. It's not the score. It was the vote. They got us all brand new home. <laughs> they got us all our brand new home. Yeah. What? It, the vote was 7-4 to four for the stadium. So, yeah. I don't know. Wow. You... And there, there's another one. All right. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Austin FC. There's the chant. That's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Else. So three of the six chants. Yeah. Okay, well, so, I, I have the rest, but they're not even worth uh, so, going through. So these six chants are never going to be chanted in the Oh, I, I doubt it. Yeah. They, they, they might, oh, wait. They might. Tr- they have. They have no, until no, no. like 2021. No, all right. All right. Fine. All right, all right, all right, all right, <laughs> all right. I think it loses right. something there. Yeah, I'll lose but, yeah. but when we get season tickets for three beers in, I, I loses, go. <laughs> loses something from both sources. Like, yeah. Well, that's the point. But I don't know how that that relates to Austin at all. Tom Petty. Uh, I mean, he's been here. But, uh, been here, not from here. She doesn't even go here. Kind of like Cutter. I am yeah. from here. Thank you very much. Uh, so these guys have been brewing. How, how long have they actually been brewing? You know, I know you mentioned it 2010, earlier. right? That's what you said? No. The, no that's, that's, what, that's, that's when he got his home brewing kit. Yeah, so, 2010. 20, I thought but it took three years to get the thing. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure like 2015, 16. That's when they officially opened. They've only been canon since the summer? Yeah. Yeah. Now they have a... A giant solar powered distribution center down the street from their tap room. Cool. So, and a 30 barrel system from what I've read. So, is the beer made by solar power or is it just distributed or like bottled or can? They probably use solar power wherever they can. I don't know. I know it's becoming so a There's not a lot of information about it out there. Or I wasn't able to find it. I don't know. If somebody has some information out there, we'll. Do you think that's pretty innovative for a beer company to be using solar I, power? I think, I think a lot of 
new companies are especially like something like this renewable energy yeah. helps out a lot keeps costs down like wrench they use wind powers so, right yeah and today i bet they have a lot of energy stored yeah <laughs> after today oh yeah oh it's windy day yeah my second one here i'm not tasting the hops as much now which is kind of nice um, yeah it's smoother almost right it makes it feel a little smoother mm-hmm. not tasting I, I a felt, bitter bite yeah i felt as i was drinking more of the first one i got less and less of that taste mm-hmm I still get a bitterness, but it's more coffee bitter. Yeah. It's that roasted malt bitter. Yeah. I know. It's I know. I know. We talked bad. to uh, talked about the American versus the European. But what flavor profile do you what flavor profile do you like on your stouts? Do you like the oatmeal stouts? Do you like the uh, Guinness? Guinness, yeah, mm, of course. So like an herbal and earthy yeah. sort of thing, mm. lightly floral maybe, but. Yeah. I, I used to I used to be a big Guinness guy. It's a, I, I've started leaning more towards the coconut stouts, the mm-hmm. the, the milk stouts, and that kind of stuff. Yeah, Light, a nice nitro stout is good mm. because it makes it smoother. Left hand, yeah. too, like left hand, that's a milk stout they too. Do. Left yeah. hand, theirs was good. Left hand milk stout is good. I have, I honestly stout. haven't had. Well, I guess I have had their nitro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oatmeal stouts are good. I've had those. Sam Smith's my personal favorite. Uh, who, that's a, that's a European. Convict Hill. A Convict Hill. Convict Hill is always a good one, too. Because I think I tried that one randomly like years ago and was just like, oh, this is actually pretty good. Yeah. That was the first Independence beer that I really liked because I wasn't ever really impressed with their amber. Yeah. I've, I've grown oh, into right, it now, yeah. but it's all like the, uh, the, Invic- the, the Convict Hill. The Invict. Invict. The, the Inmate Invic- Hill. Invic- Inmate no, Hill. The, the, con- the Convict Hill. It's all, that was my first one. I was like, I don't like this beer. Yeah. I bought it. I think I think I bought it once a man. week, like mm. for a whole year. Like when they are good, together. Man, they are a good brewery. Yeah, yeah. They're I really awesome. I really like the stuff they put out. You know, I might not be crazy about everything, but they do really good stuff. They that native Texan ev- though. Yeah, native Texan. Native really Texan's good. good. And uh, and everything's consistent. They're pow- they're the pale ale power and power light. light. That's good. Yeah. Even if it is a little hoppy, like. It's not overly hoppy. It's good. Red Time Bud. is always right for a power and light. Not Red Bud. Texas Beer Company, they do... Is it Red Bud? Red Bud, yeah. Yeah, Red Bud. Berliner good. Weiss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably my favorite Berliner Weiss that I've had. This is a Red Bud. Yep. Yeah. The Texas Beer Company, they do a red, a blonde, a pale ale, a stout, porter. Do they do an IPA? They have to do an IPA. I'm sure they do. Mm. I'll like them a lot better if they don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think oh, that's I, how that goes. And, and clearly, they do a lot more in their tap room. Yeah, yeah. You said you said red, but I mean it's amber. Amber. That's what it is. It is an amber. You're they right. won. Uh, they won uh, gold for that. Their their can is red. That's why I thought it was red. Oh yeah, for their amber. Yeah. Hmm. Should do that one. Yeah, it's a hoppy amber. I had it at the Salado Beer Fest. I was not. Yeah, I can't remember the name of it. Yeah, but it's. Just... Yeah, I re- really wasn't impressed. When I think of amber, that's not really what I think of. But oh, they do have an IPA. It's called Hoppy Duck. Hoppy? Mm. No, I don't think oh, I've yeah, seen right. that. Yeah, I don't think they can it, but mm. they might. They said they're starting. Well, last year. This is an old photo. <laughs> Shock. <laughs> he Im- he implied earlier that their website is seriously out of date. Yeah. Yeah. We need he only it. implied it though. He didn't actually. No, say yeah, it I didn't right. say it. Yeah. I just implied it. So yeah, yeah. So you can you can take that and do your. It's like it's like when you say bless their heart, you can literally say like the worst thing about <laughs> anything. Now I wouldn't say this. <laughs> I wouldn't normally say this. I wouldn't say there's three grackles for every batch of king grackle stuff. <laughs> they might grind their bones up and make a nice stout. So, uh, we're not saying that <laughs> now, but. That's how that's how they get this great color. <laughs> that, yeah, that so dark, dark as your soul, man. The top of it is we're, that we're light. Ta- we're brown. talking about uh, enslaving people and making beer <laughs> earlier. Well, I, I, no, I don't <laughs> think we were talking about that. that, that was that we, before we the cut? Yes, no, no, tro- tropical, that, that, tro- that tropical stuff. Uh, it's getting edited maybe. out. Maybe anyway. We'll see. Brewed with solar and people power. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Joel, Joel said that earlier. Uh, yes. I, I missed it earlier. Well, you made the it. connection to yeah. slavery. <laughs> yeah. Well, so we were talking about stouts and slaves. Stir. And... <laughs> That's Stir. what they really mean by Stir. Taylor is a brewery. They basically just enslaved the, right, the right, entire right. population yes. of the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, they just updated their website. It's like apparently a tropical stout is coming next month. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Cutter. Hey, Ross. Have you ever heard of barbecue? Never. Do you I'm like not. barbecue? Okay. Well, well, I bet when people think of barbecue, they think of Dallas barbecue. I do not. Well, because <laughs> I've never heard of barbecue, I don't know what I think. 
Well, you know, it doesn't get much more authentic than Texas barbecue in New York City. <laughs> Owned and operated by New York natives, the Wisconsin family, Dallas Barbecue is a family-run restaurant business with a four-generation history in New York City. It all started in 1936 with Carl and Grace, who opened Grace's Luncheonette. Carl's son, Herb, started the historic Wetson's Hamburgers, a chain in 1960s that grew close to 100 locations in New York City. This is really hurting my soul yeah. right now. But we don't we don't care about that shit because in the 1980s they opened Dallas Barbecue. In the 1990s they opened another fucking restaurant <laughs> <laughs> currently run by the three generations, Herb, Greg, and Stuart Wittanson. Oh, that's a stupid name. I don't know. It sounds like a good solid Dallas name. Yeah, yeah, exactly. With 10 locations, Dallas Barbecue covers every borough in the city except Staten Island. And under the Statue of Liberty's robe. <laughs> They're in Manhattan, the Bronx, Brooklyn, Chelsea, Upper East Side, East Village, and Times Square. We're not saying they're like a disease, but anyway. They clearly are. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, the Times Square Dallas Barbecue seats 780 people. And on a busy night, they can serve up to 10,000 meals, including catering, takeout, and delivery. Their smallest location in the East Village accommodates 150 people. The house specialty is, is the slow-cooked rotisserie chicken and baby back ribs. Baby and back, they baby are also well-regarded for their Texas-sized frozen drinks, wings, burgers, and seafood. But staying hip and fun while being responsibly priced, Dallas Barbecue caters New Yorkers of all sorts, like Paul Rudd, Yoko Ono, New York tough guy Alan Alda, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, <laughs> Diane Arbus, the Rizza, the Jizza, Old Dirty Bastard, Inspect the Deck, the whole Wu Tang clan, <laughs> and Cornelius Vanderbilt. And what's more Texan than that? Really, who thinks Cornelius Vanderbilt and doesn't think Texas barbecue? With over 50,000 fans on Facebook and a powerful presence on Instagram and various media platforms, Dallas Barbecue is as relevant as ever and part of the pulse of New York City. But you know what doesn't need social media? Hanson. I mean, <laughs> barbecue. <laughs> right now, get 10% off your entire order with the offer code, Hey, this is barbecue. This is Texas barbecue here. I don't know. <laughs> I tried to do an impression, but clearly. It is pretty popular up there. They have one right outside of Chinatown. It was packed one night. I'm packed. I'm thoroughly, very, thoroughly I'm disappointed very, in I'm, the human yeah. race. I'm very angry yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> As you should be. When we drove by, I was like, who the fuck is eating this place? I was it's, probably everybody. Just a, it's probably just a bunch of hipsters trying to be super ironic. 1980s. Yeah. This See, was before the hipster movement. This was. No, I said, I said it was this is a bunch of fucking Hipster New Yorkers beans. opening up a Texas barbecue place. A Dallas barbecue. Well, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Still in Texas. Like, <laughs> no, it's in New York. No. Oh. <laughs> and that's the goddamn problem. <laughs> I didn't one hear one problem. That they, they, you didn't hear one thing. They, what? They better have fucking at least been down here and like oh, learned no. how to barbecue properly. I don't know. My sister said she can't find good barbecue in New York, so I imagine she's been there. And when she comes back home, that's it's the one wrong. Thing she wants it's, if, if it's a bunch very... of New Yorkers <laughs> name their place Dallas <laughs> Barbecue. I'm not banking on it being super impressive. Was it the TV show Dallas? Maybe they were like such big fans. <laughs> Maybe it makes it. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm like so cringing inside myself their, right their now. Their most like, popular beer on tap is the Native Texas. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It just, Made in New York. Say, might as well just double down. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, where the fuck do you get off? Uh, Doing Times that Square. Shit. Times Square. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, 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 where they get, that's where they fucking get off. No, that's right? where you get that's off to go station. to the restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> They're not even from fucking Texas. Are you kidding me? <laughs> fuck those guys. No. Uh, from what I hey, know. those are our sponsors. Uh, <laughs> 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 I don't want your fucking money. <laughs> Yeah, because they didn't give it. Yeah, from, from what I I saw, they are born and raised in New York. So, I think Long Island was where they were from. But yeah, makes it even worse. Yeah. Oh, it's so bad. It, hey, it's barbecue. <laughs> there you it, go. It's like false fucking advertisement, you know? Like, yeah. Not nah, because Dallas could mean anything. 
Like for could instance, could just be a guy. It guy's could name. be. It could be Fort Worth. Uh, <laughs> you should open a place called from Fort Worth. New York's, <laughs> Clint's New York Strip. <laughs> uh, yeah. Maybe. Well, I guess, what, wait, what, what are you selling there? Like, yeah, exactly. I guess. I guess that's my. This is the uh, fuck you, Clint T Bone. What are you actually selling again? Yeah. <laughs> like when you walk into a quote New New York style pizzeria here. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Is it? Are they? Have they ever been to New York? Are they from New York? Like, but this is barbecue. Pizza's not. Great. I should start asking that question. Like. <laughs> Who's from New York around here? You better be. You, you call yourself a New York pizzeria. Oh, sorry. All right. I'm shaking it off, guys. But I digress. But I digress. I just, man. I do declare. Really makes me want to punch a New Yorker, you know? Remember the Alamo. Remember, remember Dallas Barbecue. Oh, God. Yeah. It was just I heard that recently. From pod- another podcast. Hmm. You listen to other podcasts besides ours. You can find it three beers in podcast.com where you find all of your like regular podcasts. Wherever you find all of your three beers in podcast. Uh, but yeah, seriously, um, vote. Like give us star ratings. We need some. some oh, yeah. You don't even have to leave a comment. Just no, yeah, we, star it. Yeah, we don't care about reviews yeah. really. Just, just like rate, to get rate it five year. stars. It gets 100 this year. That'd be pretty awesome. Yeah. We got like 16. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure we have 16 right now. Do we have 16 reviews? It's been like that for like no, six months. 16, 16 ratings. 16 oh. ratings. I think That's we have nice. eight reviews. Yeah. Yeah. We have, wait, what? Where? Yeah. On iTunes. iTunes. Oh, I don't go to fucking iTunes. I don't yeah, know. exactly. How many, how many, you're, you're how many part fake of the problem, accounts have you man? created? <laughs> what? How many what? Have how many created? fake accounts have you created? Uh, Surprisingly, none. Yeah, yeah. They're actually actual people. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they're actual people. <laughs> Some of them are right, actual They're people. definitely not bots. I, mean, I don't. No. Just, I don't agree with that the Tony the one. Rush, but. The Russian bots are <laughs> already found us and latched on. <laughs> well, if they're leaving reviews, I mean that's fine. Yeah, as long as they leave five stars, we don't really care. Yeah, it's like all right, we know how to get it under their nerves. We're gonna make a <laughs> barbecue place. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's how to get on my nerves. Welcome to Sasha's Barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, man, let's open up a place down here called New York Style Barbecue. Oh god, <laughs> nobody would come to this. No, no, no. They we wouldn't. can just make it really ritzy just like a little like a little beef bone it's like a little bit of barbecue sauce scattered all over a white plate and then just be like this is new york style there you go it's vegan. twenty dollars I, <laughs> I don't know i can picture it though whatever 20 bucks is still probably affordable like yeah. <laughs> compared to the barbecue plates you get in new york <laughs> oh man yeah i get the three rib plate that'll be 75 dollars <laughs> for your bullshit ass not texas style barbecue ribs fuck you yeah. buddy Are these texas ribs <laughs> Because I'd pay seventy five dollars for Texas. Ribs. I better see some bo- oh, brontosaurus style ribs. Oh, my, my fucking car better tip, tip over. over. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for getting that Flintstones reference. I got it. Yeah. yeah. I got so, uh, it. yeah, I guess it is easier to drink out of this small. <laughs> <laughs> I tried I to slow uh, down. I tried to go yeah. slower. Y'all, I'm, I, don't, I don't know. Well, you got to feed your. I, you got to feed know. your rage. You got to just feel it. <laughs> I had to drink down my rage. That's yeah. what it was. It's like extinguish the flame. <laughs> I don't know if I can do a third. I probably shouldn't. I really shouldn't. The the level that's of, your fault for drinking before. Yeah, this. we <laughs> talked about this last night. But we you talked about this. Did we? Yeah, no, we no, did. No. You sucked it up with cookies, though. No, no. <laughs> yeah, that 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 like made me want to go on like a Ryan Johnson. Oh rant. god! <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> fuck you, Dallas Barbecue. <laughs> Eat a dick. <laughs> that's right. I hate you, Dallas Barbecue. Let me count the ways. <laughs> One, you're not from fucking Texas. <laughs> Two, you're not from fucking Texas. Both good, valid arguments, yes. The first 75. Are... <laughs> Way to ruin... all, all very valid. All, all valid. Way to ruin a franchise. you got to bring that down to Texas and open Dallas Barbecue. Uh, I don't think that would work here. No, no, no nobody would want Dallas no, Barbecue no, here in Texas. They're like, Dallas? <laughs> Maybe in Dallas. Maybe but... maybe we should get on days that we record. We should get a uh, food trailer, oh, some Dallas man. barbecue right outside. They're <laughs> <laughs> sponsoring. Yeah, we will sponsor you. Come to the Bradley Bar. We'll do a live show every yeah. time. You sponsor us, we'll sponsor you. We should do that. Have advertisements or company. I think we've tried, right? Do advertisement companies we want to get attention from? Should I get them on the podcast yeah, or I mean, actually sponsor? I don't know. If Somewhat conflict get... of interest. Yeah. <laughs> 
I don't know if it'll work, but whatever. I, I'm not sure who mentioned who some people are our, our style of no. advertising. As, as long as. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I, I hey, was hey, talking hey. to. Uh, what is it? It's like any sort of advertisement is better than no yeah, advertisement. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, but so I was hanging out with the guys with Hop Squad, and Alex's wife was saying that she listened to the episode, and it's like she's telling him, "Why would you say such things on on the <laughs> podcast? You're supposed to be a businessman. Nobody's gonna want to do business with you after Did she talking about the Incredible Hulk sperm." Since, <laughs> no, but I just remember some of the stuff that we talked about. And so, she didn't give examples. That's no, but yeah. Uh, uh, incredible Hulk sperm. It's what are you yeah. talking about? <laughs> Hulk smash. Hulk <laughs> smash that is. <laughs> A lot of people would want to You're talking about, you. yeah. I mean, we were talking about uh, the effects of radiation and all that. But yeah, and I was thinking like, yeah, yeah. No, it shows who you are really. And, and in the industry as a brewer, I think it would just like you, you hear people joking about stuff and it's like, yeah, I want to drink what they're, they're making. I don't know. Want to work with them too? Possibly get people to want to work with you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What? They're like, oh, these are fun guys. Yeah. They're cool. Exactly. Yeah. No problem. I don't think. Yeah. Except Except for business I mean, here. unless you want to try to do deal with wrench, you know, like <sighs> uh, then maybe. Um, okay. So what we're trying to say is Eric. Is it Eric? Alex. Alex. Your wife is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, your wife is wrong. <laughs> Don't get Alex in trouble. <laughs> That's going on a shirt. <laughs> Eric, <laughs> Don't go back to her. I will buy that shirt. That's a great, that's a great quote. <laughs> Eric, is it Eric? Alex, your wife is wrong. <laughs> Can we get a shirt? <laughs> Just make the shirt be like... Eric, and then like have an X through it. Alex, like the stroke. Yeah. Can we also have a three beers in shirt that has sponsored by Dallas Barbecue on the bottom? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. No. <laughs> well, ah, yeah, fuck them. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I don't give a shit about that. Like real companies, yeah, sure, but fuck those but guys. Not them. Yeah. Yeah. It's all legal until you get a cease and desist. <laughs> <laughs> Cause you know I can't resist you, baby. Never a bad when, idea. <laughs> <laughs> Until it is. I wish someone would make a shirt of that. Oh, yeah, we did. Can we do it like sponsored by Dallas Barbecue? Fuck you, Ryan Johnson. Or like that yeah. shirt. Eat a dick. Ryan Johnson, eat a barbecue dick from Dallas Barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, you can't get barbecue dick there. Didn't uh, know that. No, I didn't know that. <laughs> It is not on their website. I don't know. I didn't look. It's just so maybe I didn't look hard enough. Rocky know. Mountain Oysters. Is oh, what it's there you go. <laughs> Those are balls. My bad. Yeah. Those are balls. Well, they're called oysters, right? Huh? Class it up a little bit. Call it oysters. Uh, so you don't know that you're eating testicles. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> My mom always told me they were nuggets for the longest time. Oh, why would <laughs> the longest time? Well, no, 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 they're, they're pretty good. You know what they also eat, which I, I've discussed this with Cutter, and he can't give me a good reason, but they eat chili with cinnamon rolls. Yeah. They'll just break off a piece of that cinnamon roll, dip it in the chili, and just huh. go sweet, to town. Sweet and savory. Maybe. It's delicious. No. That sounds not bad. It's no. delicious. What? I'll you try ever, it. You ever had it? There there are a lot of things I haven't had that <laughs> I know <laughs> not to try. Question. Yes, Clint. What the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> See? See, that's the that's the appropriate response. I'm cultured. Eating Kansas cinnamon culture. roll with chili. fucking chili is cultured. I would be willing. I bet the chili had fucking beans in it too. Oh god, you I fuckers! Hope, I hope there's beans in it. Fucking chili, bastard. chili needs to have beans. That is, that is. Clint is raging. Fuck Ryan Johnson. <laughs> you know, so do you prefer this to old Rasputin? No, I prefer. Oh old man, Rasputin. yeah, I'd say I, I'd prefer old Rasputin to this too. This is good. No, I, I really do enjoy this beer. But you know, it'd be really interesting with like a texas stout if they did a little bit of like mesquite smoking to the hops uh, Ooh. Ooh. No. i'm intrigued that could be interesting mesquite smoked hops i think yeah. you have to really nail no, it not the hops yeah I'm sorry, malts but like a little bit not of hops yeah yeah, yeah. The malts, malts, yeah malts 
it could be really easy to just go overboard. Oh yeah, it could be really you, easy. You have to do give, it well. Give it a little bit of that mesquite flavor. Even that some smoke. cedar, cedar smoke. See that. That's less Texas, I would say. But yeah, how is that less Texas? Because mesquite. Like, like, what if we really sell it? Only grows in Texas. I guess what so. Is, what is mesquite? The tree it's made out of mosquitoes. What if we just give you a piece of it? No, you put it in your mouth. Those, those are what you the, pour uh, the beer through it. It's a filter. <laughs> Mosquitoes yeah, yeah. are just Mexican mesquite trees. Okay. <laughs> I like that. I it's like a that. little. It's a little one. The little ones. Yeah, <laughs> the little, my, my mesquite little, little mesquite trees. The mosquitoes. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. So you're saying mesquite is more Texas than cedar? Yeah. I would say so. Uh, yeah, I think so. Although cedar fucks up a lot of people oh, in yeah. Texas. Oh, yeah. Texas. Yeah. I do. I think this beer like. A little smoky flavor added in here, yeah. I think, could make it a little bit better. A little smoke in there. Uh, speaking of Bird Box, so I We're found... We're speaking of Bird Box now? Or... Grackle so Box. No, hold on. Grackle yeah. Box. The movie, yeah? Yeah, the movie. Netflix anyway. movie, yeah. So, apparently, that movie, the kind of premise of it, has a lot in common with the story that was the inspiration for Disney's Frozen. Really? About the story that was supposedly inspiration for Disney's Frozen was mm-hmm. the the Ice Queen or something like that. And it's like a uh, Netherlands, right, uh, I, I don't know, know, whatever. I get it now. A, a Scandinavian bit. story, mm-hmm. right? But Ice in Queen, the story, yeah. something happens and dust blows into people's eyes and that makes them see the worst in uh, everything. Everybody oh, and okay. that like promotes them to act violently towards mm-hmm. each other, which is from what I hear. I haven't seen the movie, but Bird Box is kind of the same thing. It's either yeah. worst fears, spoilers, sort of. Yeah, I mean, I mean they give it away it's, in the first it's ten minutes. Sort of but. up up to interpretation what they see. Sort of. We're talking about Bird Box. Though. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Still no, Bird frozen, Box. Frozen? No. Frozen? <laughs> the, the idea is like Should something the, is uh, impacting. Bird Box challenge. Just go around an HED <laughs> blindfolded. <laughs> the crackle box. <laughs> if you can't see them, they can't poop on you. No. <laughs> That's why I live every day. <laughs> <laughs> it could be them that poop on you. <laughs> Or it could be any other bird that pooped on you. Was it a grackle or a scarlet macaw? <laughs> oh, sh- shit. <laughs> Literally, shit. Bird where did shit. That, where did that one come from? Damn. It probably wasn't a scarlet macaw unless one escaped from the zoo. Yeah, I was thinking. Was like... I bet you would know if it was a scarlet macaw just simply because... Like people are going, holy, holy crap! Yeah. <laughs> 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 Parrot. So you would you would need to be blinded and have like he- headphones yeah. or earmuffs on right, yeah. so that you can't see or hear. So so then, it'd be like it would be like the Grackle Box challenge with the Quiet Place <laughs> <laughs> or a Quiet no, Place. No, no, no. You can't make a sound in yeah. a Quiet Place. Right? Yeah, no, that's right. Unless there's water. So then you also have to shut your goddamn mouth, Cutter. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to say, Clint? Shut your goddamn yeah. mouth, Cutter. No, I'm going to say, you go. fuck you, Cutter. <sighs> Golden opportunity. You missed it. I softballed it in there. C- and fucking C- Clint whipped. CB Gold. <laughs> Hashtag CB Gold. That's what Dallas Barbecue calls their... Uh... <laughs> oh, motherfuckers. Oh, their sauce. <laughs> yeah, their <laughs> sauce. That, that makes it personal. <laughs> I will burn down every single one of the restaurants. Well, we can put these chicken wings in some CB Gold <laughs> some some CB, sauce. CB Gold barbecue sauce. Just honey mustard. Fuck you. <laughs> Buying a plane ticket. Burning all of your restaurants down to the ground. Hashtag CB Gold barbecue sauce. There you go. Pick it up your local bodega now. Hashtag CB Gold barbecue sauce. I don't understand. You're the so, Ryan. Don't take your rage out on me. Take it out on Dallas barbecue. I don't, <laughs> Cutter is the Ryan Johnson of this podcast. So, could you give Clint a back rub? Because he really needs a back rub right now. So what I, what I really need. Work that not. Is to not be drinking this beer. Yeah. That 7.5 is strong. You know what? Chicken butt. Fuck you, you Cutter. You know why? Chicken thigh. Mm -hmm. Damn it. Oh, look at this. Ross. It's only two. That that was his second one. I wouldn't say it's heavy or anything. It's just, I don't know. It's taken a while for me to drink. What um? So what? What parents did you have today at Circle? Were they actual Girl Scout cookies, or were they? Just, yeah, okay. no, they were actual Girl Scouts. <laughs> no, they were actual Girl Scouts. <laughs> they there was a table with Girl Scouts out in the parking lot selling boxes because cookies. they're not allowed inside because no, they're well, minors. No, uh, I mean, oh no, no, it's kid friendly. I, I, I don't think you can uh, solicit 
Like, I think that's a big thing. That's why they're always set up outside of a business, not inside of a business. Also, when everybody gets in there, there's no room for the Girl Scouts. Yeah, Mike was like, covered like like was... <laughs> was just, like, just like all those graduates in that fridge. Yeah, right? it was. <laughs> are, we it was gang- <laughs> are we talking about gangbangs? No. <laughs> Some of us are. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was a uh, jam packed in what, there. Uh, okay, so you had I don't really know the names of the cookies. I mean, Thin Mint was paired with Tuxedo T shirt. Samoa or what? No, in Texas. Caramel, Ooh. Ooh. Caramel Delight. Caramel Delight. Yeah. That was one. That one was really good. It was paired, I think, with the Blur and the tag, uh, tag along. Which one is that? I, I mean, I don't know any of what's my girls. What's the What's cookies? the one that's like <laughs> a butter cookie they had covered t- in chocolate? Yeah, that was the first. I don't oh, know the know name of about, it, yeah. but that was the the, the first short, one. Shortbread cookies, okay, short, yeah, it was, so. it's shortbread with like they chocolate have, on the bottom. The thank you, mm. the, it's like they have the yeah, thing. thank you. I yeah. think is what it is. That one was paired with their alibi blonde. It was really good. Sorry, Ooh. I don't know the name of the cookie. Is it Girl Scout cookie season? Can, are they yeah. like out now? No, they're, they're yeah. outside the Sam's Club today. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and I, yeah how are. many boxes did you buy, Connor? <laughs> I, I didn't buy any today simply because I hid behind somebody so I didn't have to make eye yeah. contact. <laughs> and if you ever catch eyes with a guy next to you at a red light, you got to race him. I remember in college once, I had to return you, a DVD to Blockbuster. I remember pulling into the parking lot, seeing the, the Girl Scout cookies right outside of Blockbuster. Yeah. And I was like, I had to sit in my car for five minutes. <laughs> they left. So I had to sit in my car for five minutes, like psyching myself up to deny not them gonna, that I'm gonna not going to buy cookies. <laughs> not going to do it. I'm going to walk up. I'm going to drop gonna it be. in the slot. I'm going to leave. That's all I'm going to do. I'm not. I don't even You're not even going to get another movie. But, so I got all. I got all. Well, I was, but <laughs> but, I, but you but didn't I trust saw, yourself. I didn't because trust you'd myself. have to come back. Right, exactly. past them It's like I was a good ten out. feet away. It's like so I I walked up. So I finally walked up, deposited the movie. Uh-huh. I almost got off the sidewalk, and one girl goes. Would you like to buy some Girl Scout oh, cookies? Oh. I was like, ah, right. just take my money. <laughs> like, I literally <laughs> turned around and bought like four boxes of Samoas. Uh, you know, ca- they're, they're caramel caramel delights. delights. Yeah. Samoas are dark chocolate. Are they? Caramel delights are milk chocolate. Oh, okay. Huh. You know you know what I do? I tell them no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just you know why? It's because you have no soul. Yes. Yeah, I was going to say have self-control. No. But yeah, <laughs> Did Amy I, eat it? I, I like your answer better. <laughs> <laughs> I stare into their eyes and say, no. Just say no. I will crush your soul right now. No. I do the opposite. I'm like, what does all this money buy me? <laughs> and they're like, yeah. oh, you got him. Apparently, they were $4 a box today. I don't know what? If, that's not, if, if that's good Joel, or bad. Joel or no, that's, that's bad. That's bad? Joel intentionally pulls I mean, for out. a box of cookies. You've been I getting mean, you ripped did... off by the Girl Scouts, Joel? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <ripped> Hustled. <laughs> Hustled. Yeah. How much? I, I would think with inflation, it should be like seven or eight dollars. It seems kind of cheap to me, but yeah. I don't God know. damn it, Bernice! <laughs> I know a few people that have worked for the Girl Scouts. I thought they were ten dollars for some reason. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean like like the the higher ups, not like the actual. No, I, I was not talking the about. Not the uh, I was talking about the ten dollars. <laughs> Joel, Joel was yeah. like Joel. They they see Joel coming. They're like. We got this motherfucker. Right? <laughs> oh, that, that happened one time. He's he's seven, fanning his money out. Yeah, like, like seven bucks a box. Like I was, I was looking like a, at his pocket money in the as extra he's three. I can see the, I can see Clint like walking up, like pulling out money, doo-doo. pulling cash out of his wallet, and then walking like just right past them, like to, <laughs> just to put it back in his wallet as he walks <laughs> into the store. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to see that. Yeah, yeah that actually, would be pretty fun. Yeah. I'm just like just pull picturing out, it, pull yeah. out my money and like start counting it in my hands as I yeah. walk past them. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Put it back in my pocket. Make sure to make eye contact with them as you're walking up, <laughs> just to walk like like do a little like arc. Yeah. Like, just, like, like do like right walk, up next to like, the table, like walking like, straight hip. towards the table, touch and hip then... to the table. <laughs> and then when they ask you if you want cookies, just don't acknowledge them. Yeah. <laughs> don't even say no. You don't just... exist. <laughs> it's like it's like pull out two bucks and then hand it to your daughter and go. There's a soda machine right over there. <laughs> Oh, man. The, uh, I, yeah. I mean, I so guess you're a, getting getting a bunch of sodas, maybe at that or just no, just one soda bottle. inflation. It's a bottle. Of, I remember oh, of a bottle. Oh, my man. mom would it's not yeah. a can, you know. Yeah. My mom would take gotta us. Be fancy. My, yeah. I remember my mom would take us to church, and afterwards, our like, gift for going and being you know, quiet would be to go get soda. Yeah, and so she would go, and it was always Doctor Thunder seventy nine cents for like a twenty ounce or something like that. Yeah. Was, and then it got to like 
a dollar. And yeah. Then, and then as an adult, I'm like, why am I paying almost two dollars for a bottle of soda? Yeah. Oh, you're overpaying. Who's your soda guy? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Joel, you keep on getting ripped off everywhere. <laughs> they just see me in like sweatpants. My hair is grown out. They're like, look at this sad motherfucker. Oh, <laughs> <God>. This guy's <laughs> single. He's got <laughs> cash. <Yeah. laughs> You get a fountain drink for 79 cents. I, I tell you what, you get a kid, all of a sudden you realize how much shit costs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ, this life is expensive. <laughs> yeah. And it really ruins your body. Yeah, it yeah. really does. Yeah. The kid? Um, <laughs> you know, you know what You know what made it easy for me is that they, uh, Cocaine. they got... Cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> Cocaine really made it easy for me. The Girl Scouts got rid of the cookie I liked, so... Oh, what, what, what did you like? The s'mores or? As a kid growing up and stuff, I always liked the one that had the yeah. raspberry center. Yeah. Oh, like sandwich cookie good. that had the ra- raspberry yeah. center. I love those. They don't sell them anymore. Yeah. Really? So fuck you. I don't want your goddamn cookies. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know. Had... I know you have, you're an old soul. <laughs> What's that? You like the flavor of raspberry yeah. soda. <laughs> yeah. That's fucking disgusting. <laughs> what do you mean? That's why they don't sell it. They're good. You put your finger they through it. They were delicious. Like it. They, yeah, don't, they, don't even, like they don't even. They don't even fucking put them in donuts. They put strawberry. Uh, they do put raspberry filling in donuts. Well, for bitches, you fuck <laughs> bitches. Basic. I like that strawberry. <laughs> fucking <laughs> basic bitch cutter over here. I was gonna make a raspberry noise, but it didn't work. Uh-huh. The I'm, fuck is oh. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm the thin mitts type. Like the yeah, it's I, called a raspberry. I, I, yeah, uncultured swine. Only one man in the universe would dare to give me the raspberry. Lone Star. Oh, yeah. I usually just have Thin Mints. Today was like the first time in a long time I've had the other Girl Scout cookies. They're not bad. Yeah. I always, I always I, go with caramel delights. The shortbread yeah. ones, the shortbread ones aren't bad. No, those have fucking coconut in them. Fuck yeah, that shit. Yeah, that's why they're delicious. Why they're fucking delicious. Yeah. No, that's disgusting. One of the reasons. Keep your they're goddamn cool. coconut out of my cookies. Paired coconut with, shortbread paired with the blur. <laughs> Fuck yeah. And then they had no. three With the peanuts. blur? Sweet and yeah. coconut. Because coconut the, does half taste like that. Interesting choice. Devil's and the, fruit. And then they had... <laughs> I would have gone. They had like, like three the pig, peanut butter cookies. Either pig cookies. Yeah, yeah nobody wants that shit either. Said. Pink. Pig. Pig. Don't they have like the the party pig? What's their party pig? They had. They had. They actually had two that they were serving there. They had their two pigs. Their party pig, and then they had the disco pig. Oh yeah, it's like. But I feel like that would have been on better with that. Uh, I prefer the disco pig myself. But is yeah. that the uh, Brett? The Brett aged. Brett barrel aged. Yeah. Well, I feel like that would have paired with the coconut a little they bit. They also had on tap. I didn't try it because it wasn't part of the uh, the pairings. But they had a brandy pig. Ooh, brandy. Yeah, which is it's the Lipstick party pig. pig. <laughs> I heard she's a it, fine girl. It's their imperial, <laughs> their imperial porter aged in a <laughs> a brandy barrel. No, no, nice. They also had a rum pig, but I was like, eh. no thanks. So you said it was busy, oh, right? Oh man, it was packed. It was That's it cool. was crazy busy. Well, they're gonna get a bigger place, right? Yeah. The thing is, exclusive. There are two. Oh, I, oh, I man, thought you were shaking your head at my reference. Yeah, what did you say? I said I heard she was a fine girl. Brandy, you're a fine girl. <laughs> what? Oh, I'll have to cut it to where the two is conversations the aren't overlapping. One of Earth's greatest musical compositions, perhaps its very greatest. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and it was in Guardians of the Galaxy too at the yeah. very beginning. Uh, I think. Uh, I oh. Think I can... Not the very beginning. Wait, because... what? Isn't it you're a good girl? You're a fine, fine girl. girl. Oh. But a good wife you would be... Good girl would be demeaning. Oh. <laughs> it's all pretty demeaning. Uh, I don't know. Demeaning of that word. Yeah. <laughs> demeaning of that. <laughs> Use it in a sentence, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, uh, Brandy, you're a fine girl. <laughs> okay. F I N E. No, I was gonna say demeaning. <laughs> demeaning. Oh. <laughs> what song? Wait, no. It's Looking Glass. There's. <laughs> <laughs> what song? No, no. I'm thinking of an old, older song. Yeah, from the like the 70s. Yeah, Brandy, you're a fine girl. What a great wife. wife you would be. Yeah, a good wife you. Is that is what it is? Good or great? I don't know. I can't remember. God, that was good. But but my life, my love, my lady, is the sea. Brandy. You're a fine girl. What a good wife you would be. My life, my love, my lady is the sea. The sea calls the sailor back. He loves the girl, but that's not his place. 
Sea calls upon him as history calls upon great men. And sometimes we are deprived the pleasures of mortals. Kurt Russell. Yeah, he, he <laughs> explains it very well. I love it, man. What does he explain it in? Huh? Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy, Galaxy 2. 2. Oh. <laughs> Rolling blackout. <laughs> yeah. 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 I checked out go. of that movie. Yeah. There is so many dead spaces in that movie. Well, uh, there, there are a couple. The whole fight between... Nebula and and Gamora, I could have done without. It's although it's up to it, but it although just, it was, I guess it's kind of integral to the plot because in the end she helps them. So more yeah. Karen Gillian, please. I just, yeah, with hair, please. Ah, I guess so. With or without good hair, wife, please. You would be all right. Are we? Who's? Oh, Cutter, you finally done? Good. Ross is not going with his third beer. I'm guessing. No, 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 uh, no. if if I drink it, Ooh. I'm not going to be able to drive home. Just shotgun. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. Shotgun a beer, shotgun your way home. <laughs> if I go as quickly as possible in a straight line. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. As, <laughs> as the grackle flies. <laughs> <laughs> Tying it all together. Uh-huh. There you go. So should we but, recap? Yeah, but I, I would uh, say this is... We're still, we're still waiting on you, Joel. So We can start. All right, yeah, Ross, not? go ahead and kick it off. Yeah, I'd say this is still a solid one. Um, would you, though? Because you're not three beers in. Well, if you have to drive, I would not recommend drinking three. I definitely would not recommend <laughs> drinking three. Like some people. Shut well, up. <laughs> I mean, well, maybe if you hadn't been drinking all day, maybe it would I haven't been drinking all day, but since like one thirty, I mean. It's... I definitely can't drink three of these and drive. Yeah. Good thing I don't have to drive. Yeah. So one for you. Yeah, sure. Why not? Clint, you go. No, but you. Okay, yeah. Fuck you, Cutter. Nobody cares. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a one. It's a good beer. It start, started off a little on the hoppy, high alcohol. You can mm. taste it kind of yeah. side of things. But it definitely, as you progress through them, gets more mellow. It's still filling and makes you kind of still full so it's definitely yeah. not a beer that you're gonna drink like all day or you know for an extended period of time yeah like after after drinking these three i don't even know if i could finish a fourth of this uh-huh. like yeah I it's agree. it's pretty like stout it's pretty <laughs> yeah. stout if i do say so myself nobody's surprised i give this a one I mean, yeah. this is definitely in my wheelhouse. Shock. I know. He also and, gives Dallas Barbecue oh, a one, so we can't really trust oh, Ross. Th- Cutter. <laughs> Cutter. Cutter gives everything a one. That's, much. that's not entirely true. Wait, no, it's, it's called not. Dallas Barbecue? Yeah, I, I, I'm one. Giving, I've given a few zeros on this on this podcast. Yeah. American Stout's definitely right in my wheelhouse. The mm-hmm. the burnt notes, the, the, the roasted maltiness of it is just fantastic. I like how smooth it is. It's got that little bit of bitterness up front. Yep. But uh, it's a, I love how it tapers off into just like richness, like those chocolate notes really come through in the mid, and then the burnt notes on the finish, which yeah. is, is which is really really nice. But one for me, it's definitely not for the faint of heart. It's not quite an, a, an imperial stout, but mm-hmm. it's a hefty stout. It, for it, sure. Yeah, it definitely is. Hefty. Very. Yeah. I would I would agree with that. Yeah. Or you you could just say it's a stout for sure. <laughs> Hefty pork. American. It's a American. Tex- stout. It's, a Texas it's an American stout. stout. It's a Texas stout. Stouts at it's night. It's, stout. it's, it's not a Texas stout that's made in New York for sure. Yeah. The stouts <laughs> at night are big and bright. The stouts <laughs> at night like are dark and there you dark. Go. <laughs> dark and dank. Dark and dark. dark. And Joel's now done, so let's get his thoughts. I think I'm in between Clint Cutter here, so it is. You're you want to drink where it I'm looking. Yeah. You, want, you want to drink it fast. Eiffel Tower. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> Chinese figure trap. Yeah, there's, there's no proof that hasn't happened. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Let's... They live together. Come on, guys. Um, so, I don't uh, <laughs> think you understand what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, I'm in the middle? Yeah, yeah, yeah there you go. There you go. Uh, <laughs> somewhere out there, Chance is having a fan fiction. <laughs> um, Scratch that off. So, yeah, I, I agree in the sense of it's um, – I, I like it because it is um, a little bit heavier, chocolate notes in it. I like the burnt mm-hmm. flavor. but perfect, perfect for this time of like, yeah. weather, type of weather. Perfect, yeah. Uh, my only thing is, and this is where I think with, with Clint, like – 
kind of like when you start drinking, you gotta drink like the first few sips are really good, and then that towards the bottom you're just like, oh fuck, <laughs> like. As, can, a, you know, as a warms up, yeah. As it warms up, it's like can I drink more, and then oh, oh I yeah, drink a third or a fourth. It's like fuck. I mean, it, it opens it up talking. the yeah. flavors, but it's just, it's there's a stout. like I would there's there's certain yeah. beers they're good in a variety pack. This would be one of them. Yeah, yeah. Like oh yeah, I can drink one of these and I can enjoy it. Yeah, and it, it'll be good. But then I want to drink something else mm-hmm. because I don't want to drink like six of these. I I don't want a six pack of this. Like, yeah, yeah. I can't drink a six pack of this. This is like that would be if I bring a six pack of this, I expect somebody yeah. else to help me drink it. Like <laughs> no thanks. Yeah. It's too much. I agree. Yeah. If I went to a bar, I'd only have like one and then go to something else. Yes. Not that it's bad, it's just that you gotta it, move on. Yeah. It, it's a yeah. lot. It's yeah. a lot to drink. Yeah. For sure. But I feel like for me, that's always how I've been stouts of it. It's always like I'm hanging out with Tony, then we go somewhere and he's like, I'm gonna get a stout. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna get a stout. But I just ate like an hour ago, so I'm full. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna take an hour to drink yeah, this one drink stout. This one, I feel yeah. like this move beer. On to something else. I, I do feel like this beer would pair really well with like some Dallas barbecue. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fuck you, Cutter. <laughs> All right. So yeah, it's just man, it's just a lot to get through three. Like, yeah. I, I was but I was you, concerned. But you can't say that I, it's it's bad or no, you wouldn't no, no, drink no, no, it or no, no. anything like that. Yeah, yeah, I, it, it's just hard to get through three. Yeah. Um, because of its. It's heavy. Um, it's so stout. It's so <laughs> stout. But no. Uh, it's so black. Yeah, I was worried that, you know, I wouldn't be the first finished on every single one of the, the rounds. But <laughs> You were working. You were. Yeah, you just found <laughs> it. <laughs> Maybe we need to get you a smaller glass every time we do the podcast and just start drinking it. No, no this, is actually, this is actually normal for if you don't have an IPA or yeah. something overly hoppy, in my opinion. It has been a while since we had anything you could really drink and enjoy. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been, it's been, been a while. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, yeah, normally this is par for the course for me. Like, I, I'm just a faster drinker for some reason. And when it's it comes Saturday. To, well, yeah. and it's Saturday. I don't care as much. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, it goes down pretty easy, all things considered. But I would probably get halfway through my fourth and just be like, I really just do not want this anymore, is how I kind of feel right now are we done here yeah all right well <laughs> listeners thanks for uh, tuning in we appreciate you uh taking this journey with uh king grackle or sorry the king king grackle the from green grackle the green <laughs> the green crackle <laughs> the green crackle <laughs> the king grackle by texas beer company this has been clint this has been ross this is cutter joel's, joel's there. still there and this is the podcast this is the podcast three beers in is a proud member of the hopped up network thanks for sticking around you can subscribe to us on itunes stitcher podbean google play tune in and on the hopped up network.com if you like what you heard rate and review us on itunes like us on facebook Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Three Beers In Podcast and check out our website, Three Beers In Podcast.com. Three, the number three beers in podcast.com. You can find information about us in the show along with the links to all of our episodes and our really cool merchandise. While you're on our site, you can tell us what you like, what you don't like. And if you don't like us, then why the hell are you still here? You should have turned us off long ago. But if you're just going to listen to us anyway, then you should probably subscribe too. And if you'd like a transcript of our podcast, write down everything that we just said. Alex, your wife is wrong.
On the Pints and Provisions Podcast, we discuss the ins and outs of beer, brewing, and breweries in addition to all those crafts that pair well with beer, such as bourbon, coffee, food, and cooking. Join Evan, Ryan, Mark, and Dan on each episode where we discuss those crafts we love to imbibe. Here's a clip. I don't. I, I've got four full glasses over here. I need to figure out my glass situation <laughs> and, and before and you're, I pour this. You're the one that asking for more. Your own glasses. Yeah, he was. He was <laughs> the one next? that said, "What's next?" Well, there's a bunch sitting out. I thought maybe. Uh, I thought. I, I thought we were going to get those going, but we are proud members of the Hopped Up Network, where you can find all our episodes, and also look for us on iTunes, Google Play, Podbean.com, as well as Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Cheers.